67 years ago on a small plantation, Wayne Spears took his first breaths of the sweet air of South Louisiana. He grew up the loving son of a pastor and went to college where he married Nancy, the love of his life. After a couple of degrees and a few children, the young Spears family was living in New Orleans. Brother Wayne had a job with Conoco working with computers. No, not that kind of computer. These kinds of computers. As Brother Wayne would say, wow. It was while they were in New Orleans that they met Dan and Alice Chapel at Calvary Baptist Church. We've known Wayne and Nancy since January of uh, 1969. We first met them at church and they accidentally, although nothing is by accident, sat by us. And uh, then we arranged to get, I think we went out to visit them that afternoon as church visitation and then we became friends. And we, we wound up accidentally accidentally living next door to one another. Not of, accidentally. No, not accidentally. God <laughs> planned it, we didn't. But, uh, but we wound up living next door to one another, so we got to share a lot of uh, Bible study together, and we, Wayne and I would always keep the children on Monday night to watch Monday night football, and Alice and Nancy would go shopping. So we had a lot of time together. Uh, we, uh, he was a Bible study teacher, and I guess I, he taught me as much of the Bible as as I can think of any person did, because I, I studied under his, while he was doing all the initial uh, study and, and detail, theological study, uh, before he went into the ministry, I was kind of following along with him, and, and uh, he was he was teaching me that. Children all grew up together, with, with they had three, we had three, uh, so they were all friends and in each other's weddings and things like that too. So, But in our daily lives, we live life together. Our, we live next door after a while, after a couple of years, we eventually wind up living next door to one another. And when one of us would light up the grill, we'd call the other ones and say, hey, the grill's going, you wanna come put, you know, you wanna grill something tonight? And uh, we would do that a lot and we were constantly passing flour and sugar and milk and those kind of things across the fence. And our kids just were back and forth all the time um, playing. They, you know, it was like it was one big family a lot of times with the kids playing together and getting into mischief and having a good time together. And Wayne and I got, had the opportunity to build a swing set one Christmas Eve uh, till two or three o'clock in the morning in the dark outside uh, getting ready for Christmas. Uh, that was a highlight of what we talk about that still, you know, that was how foolish it was. But it worked out good. It worked out good. Good friends, good job, good church. It seemed as though Brother Wayne was set for the rest of his life. Of course, as we know, God had other plans for him. At the age of 30, Brother Wayne surrendered his life to the ministry, miraculously curing him of a speech impediment he had had his entire life. I, rem I don't remember the exact time that, that he was called to ministry, but we would get up and, and uh, we, would, we would do crazy things like go run early in the morning and stuff like that. And uh, we, might not, we might or might not do it together, but he would, we would always share about, uh, and he would share, he shared with me about, you know, he was thinking about being called into the ministry. And, and I remember that he, when he first talked to our pastor about it at the time, uh, he, uh, the pastor just automatically said, well, he said, you know, he said, my mama used to throw spaghetti on the wall. He said, so why don't you preach this Sunday and we'll see if the spaghetti sticks. <laughs> or something like that. I can't remember exactly how, but there's something like that. So uh, Wayne, I remember Wayne's first sermon at, at our church in, in New Orleans. And then he left and when he was definitely called and he quit Conoco, he left immediately to go pastor a church. He would go to school three days a week because they only went four days and he would skip one day. And But he worked on the church field in Verda and drove in like, uh, he would leave Verda like at uh, three o'clock in the morning uh, on Tuesday and drive all the way to New Orleans and have classes all day Monday, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then back on the field and, and uh, ministering to people in, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then Wayne was called in the ministry in the mid 70s. And we stayed behind. I worked for an oil company. And uh, we kept up contact with them, visited them in Verda. 
where his first pastorate was, and then in Shreveport where his second pastorate was, and, and then uh, here at, at Fairmont Park. After pastoring at Verda Baptist Church for about five years, God led a little church in Laporte, Texas to call Brother Wayne. Of course, the call was not without its difficulties. Uh, I served on the pastor search committee uh, when we called Brother Wayne to come uh, to be our pastor. We made a trip to uh, Shreveport, uh, so we wanted to hear him preach, meet him and, and his family. So we were sure that he'd be there, had called ahead of time. We took them out to dinner on Saturday evening, and they invited us to their home. So during that time, we were just getting acquainted, and we told him we were looking, our church was looking for a strong leader in a pastor. And uh, we talked a little bit more, and during that uh, session, uh, it came out that this church had a woman deacon. And he said he did not believe in women being deacons. So that was a bit of a strike against us at that time. But we were not shocked about that. Uh, we, of course, went to the worship service the next morning. And we liked what we heard and liked what we saw. And we left the church after the service, drove about an hour out of Shreveport, and uh, stopped at a roadside park and had lunch. We also had a committee meeting, and we decided, all five of us, that we would like to call him, have him come here in view of a call. And uh, at that time, we had only one uh, full-time staff person, and that was our secretary, uh, Ruth Ann Jarvis. We had a part-time music leader, not a music minister, a music leader. That's all the staff that we had. We had two buildings, the one that is now Fellowship Hall, but it was separated from the worship center. And the worship center at that time is not anything like we have today. But we had to get out in the weather to go from one building to the other. All these things didn't look very promising to the pastor we were trying to call. So they went home and uh, talked about it, prayed about it, and decided they believed they'd should not come here. They had planned a revival uh, the next week after they went home, and the evangelist was from England. And during the time the evangelist was there, Brother Wayne had a chance to discuss with him uh, his coming here in view of the call and so forth. Before that evangelist left, he went to the pastor and he said, you need to go to Texas. So he said, yes, we'll come. And so it was that 27 years ago, Brother Wayne started his journey with Fairmont Park. And what a journey it would prove to be.